from downtown Puerto Spain. This is the TV6 Weekend News. Good evening and welcome to the TV6 Weekend News. I'm Dominic Kalipasad. In the headlines, one person has died as a result of heavy rainfall in South Trinidad. The health ministry says it has identified a third case of the COVID-19 Delta variant in this country. And in sports, West Indies claim nail-biting one-wicket win against Pakistan in first test. Sad news tonight as one person has been confirmed dead, a victim of today's bad weather. Christopher Samuel was killed when a landslide brought down his home at Rancho Quemado with five other relatives inside. Vanessa Cutting has the story. Then since that he come out to work, he reach outside to go and be by the tank. I was on in London, and even I go back inside, I just heard a rumbling song. When I reached outside on the London, I just saw the whole hill coming down. The common law wife of Christopher Samuel recounts the moments before his death, still in shock that in a matter of seconds, the man she had spent the last 17 years of her life with was gone, taken from her by the forces of nature. And it comes down so swift and so fast that you just break all the whole front portion of the house, the bedroom part. I keep calling him, calling him, he was not answering. Alcharji was at home with her two children and two grandchildren when the house collapsed. Thankfully, they all escaped unharmed. Minister of Rural Development and Local Government Kazim Hossein visited the family immediately following the incident. I'm here right now at the house visiting the, 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 the mother of the home now. And I spoke with her and I gave her the assurance that I contacted the Minister of Social Development and she will be getting the necessary help. Meantime, the ODPM reports at least four other instances of collapsed homes across the country. Thankfully, no other casualties were recorded. I am here in, um, in, in uh, Lavendry Road, and this is three up here alone. And I understand we have another one down lower down on um, the, the, the old road. No more fatalities. All we have is a lot of, um, uh, even in Palo Seco, that him area, we had landslides in Palo Seco that actually blocked the road. In Buenos Aires, heading to Irene, um, and Rancho Tomado. Again, we have, um, we have, backhoes clearing the roadway. So is that these things have occurred, but the response has been um, efficient in that the Superior Regional Corporation has deployed their equipment. The disaster response team is on the ground. So we are taking care of business. Today's events were indirectly associated with the passage of Tropical Storm Grace over the Leeward Islands. The bad weather dumped several inches of rain over both Trinidad and Tobago, causing significant flash flooding in several areas across the country. However, as at 5.23 p.m., the Trinidad and Tobago Meteorological Service has officially discontinued all adverse weather alerts for this country. If, however, you are still in need of assistance, you are advised to contact the hotline number for your district. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. And over in Tobago, some three flood-related incidents were reported, two in Tobago East and one in Tobago West. TV6 spoke with residents along George Street, Canaan, where the home of the Charles family was flooded out, as Elizabeth Williams reports. At 76 years, my mother cannot be going through these things. She cannot be going through. We have, we have come through enough over the years. Mrs. Charles Woods said only talk and no action over the years. And once again, the family was flooded out. Appliances all underwater. The family is now counting their losses. She has lost fridge, deep freeze, stove, and other stuff, right? Over the years, she has lost a lot of stuff. We have been talking and talking and talking to works, talking to the chief secretary, talking to the representative that has gone before, all right? And this is to no avail. The drain built by the Division of Infrastructure runs through the family yard. Representative for the area, Clarence Jacob, also visited the family to assess the damage. The government has a drain that is running through our land at the moment. 
and it is not able to contain the water running through there. They have a drain that if they did how much years ago and the gym is not able to take the water down behind to where it's supposed to take the water, right? So over the number of years we have been getting this flooding situation, the drains are, have been overflowing and causing the problem. TV6 also walked through the floodwaters to speak with Mrs. Gloria Solomon Charles. Fire service officials and police were also there assessing the situation. The drain needs to fix. If they fix the drain, I go block it. I am going to block it. I am going to get all kind of old thing and block the whole road. And they are going to do something then. They are overdoing it, overbearing now. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. To Haiti now, where officials have confirmed at least 724 are dead following yesterday's powerful 7.2 magnitude earthquake. Rescuers are picking through rubble in a desperate search for any survivors. Some hospitals are overwhelmed and in need of medical supplies as they try to cope with the 2,800 known to have been injured by the quake, which flattened many buildings, including homes, churches and schools. Meantime, Minister of National Security Fitzgerald Hines says TNT is on standby to assist Haiti if required. Sedima, the Caribbean Emergency uh, Disaster Management Team and the CARICOM as a unit has, re have reached out to, to Haiti and from the report I have, responses are to be forthcoming. We have helped Haiti in the past and if a request is made of CARICOM, uh, whether directly through CARICOM or through Sedima, we Trinidad and Tobago must and will play our part as required, but we have not yet gotten to that point. We have a third confirmed case of the COVID-19 Delta variant. The health ministry says the patient is a recently returned national who traveled to Trinidad from Turks and Caicos, transiting through Florida. It explained that the person provided a negative PCR test, which was taken 72 hours prior to arrival, but was immediately placed into state-supervised quarantine as per the health protocol for unvaccinated adults. As a result of a positive COVID-19 result from their seventh-day swab, the person was transferred and isolated in a state step-down facility. The health ministry says the presence of the Delta variant was confirmed via gene sequencing at the laboratory of the Faculty of Medical Sciences of the University of the West Indies. According to the World Health Organization, there have been confirmed cases of the Delta variant in 142 countries around the world. It warns that people who have contracted this variant may be prone to an increased risk of severe illness and hospitalization. And seven more COVID-related deaths. That's the latest update from the Ministry of Health. The persons were four elderly men and three elderly women, all with comorbidities. This brings the total number of COVID-related deaths to 1,180. The ministry also reported this afternoon that there are 190 new positive cases from samples taken during the period August 11th to August 14th. They also gave an update on vaccinations. So far, 452,509 persons have received their first dose of the, COVID, of the vaccine, while 308,205 are now fully vaccinated. Still ahead on the TV6 Weekend News, the IRO challenges the Prime Minister to name the religious leaders who are telling their followers not to get vaccinated. First, this. The country is more vexed than vaxxed. That's the assessment of the opposition UNC, which is once again criticizing the government for what it describes as a failed vaccination strategy, following the Prime Minister's admission that he is disappointed with our vaccination figures. Vanessa Cutting has more. People who have been needled all their lives are afraid to take that moment of having that vaccine to save their life. Come on, people, let's get serious. With over 800,000 doses of COVID vaccines in hand from three different brand manufacturers, the Prime Minister has asked the question, why are persons not availing themselves of the vaccines? 
Well, according to the opposition, it's the government's fault. We are being told that the best vaccine is the vaccine which is in front of you to just hush and take it. They have failed. They have failed apart from a weekly what I would call buffing and ranting and raving. They have failed to effectively communicate and engender a sense of trust. The opposition is of the view that government does not have a clear communication strategy. On Saturday, the Prime Minister himself voiced concern with a choice of imagery used in one ad. There's a particular picture on the television which you should stop using. Or just scaring people. It's a, it's a need like a, 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 like a jab, something like, like a jab jab tool. A and puncture in an arm. And it really scares people. And now that TNT is set to vaccinate school-aged children with Pfizer vaccines with a view to returning to physical classes, the opposition is calling on the government to do a better job of persuading parents. Put the necessary data that is needed at this time, not only the efficacy of the vaccine, but they need to show about clinical trials and the confidence that these vaccines would have engendered in other countries throughout the world and so on, so as to put parents in a better position given what the government wants to do. Vaccination of persons aged 12 to 18 years is scheduled to begin later this week. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. Call names. It's the response of the inter-religious organization after Prime Minister Rowley took religious leaders to task for encouraging their followers not to take COVID-19 vaccines. The IRO counters that many of its members have been vaccinated and that it encourages everyone to get with the times and take the vaccine. Here's more. Head of the inter-religious organization of Trinidad and Tobago, Pandit Mukram Sergio, says he cannot confirm or deny reports of religious leaders discouraging their members from taking COVID vaccines, but acknowledged that there are some murmurings on the ground. What the Prime Minister should have done is maybe name the religious organizations. We have the Hindus, we have Muslims, we have Christians, we have the Orisha, we have Baha'i. The Catholic, the Presbyterian, the Anglican. Now, the Pentecostal churches does not come under the ambit of the IRO. So, if that statement would have been made, I am hoping that the, the, the Prime Minister would not have been meaning members of the inter religious organization of Trinidad and Tobago. Pandit Sergio says, as per his knowledge, there is no religious reason not to get vaccinated. People have been saying that the, the vaccine is, is devilish. We have to live with the times. What, you see what a lot of people fail to understand do. What would have been put in our scriptures 2, 3,000, 4,000, like in Hinduism now, 5,000 years ago, may not particularly obtain now. In the days when our scriptures were written, I mean, there was no technology, advanced technology like what we're dealing with now. There were no pand well, they would have been, and people would have handled it in different ways, and many persons would have lost their lives. The IRO head is making an appeal to his members to continue to do everything in their power to protect themselves against the virus. Please come and collect the thousand marks that were given to the Ministry of Finance, to NETCO, and to the Ministry of Social Development. So we ask him that the Membership, please come and collect your mask. They are at Lightpole 63 Lime Road in Chase Village. Renessa Cutting, TV6 News. To come in sports, West Indies win nail-biting first test against Pakistan. And Tottenham defeat Manchester City in the English Premier League. Now this. The West Indies ended up on the winning end in a tense fourth day of the first test match against Pakistan. On a day when 14 wickets fell in Jamaica, the Windies needed 160 to win. Kimar Roach was the hero of the day, hitting a boundary to ensure the hosts sealed a one-wicket win. Resuming on 160 for 5, Pakistan was set back early by the Windies bowlers. Fahim Ashraf was dismissed for 20. Then came the big wicket. Baba Azam has to go. He made 55. 
Pakistan eventually being dismissed for 203, Windies needing 168 to win. Seals ending with five, becoming the youngest Windies cricketer to take five wickets. In reply, Pakistan got the ideal start again. No opening partnership for the Windies. Kyron Powell goes LBW for four. Craig Brathwaite also got out and so did Nkrumah Bonner for five runs, 16 for three. Rustin Chase and Jermaine Blackwood brought the Windies back into the match, but with the score on 84, Chase had to go. Blackwood was playing his strokes and he brought up a crucial 55. Kyle Myers bowled well, but he scored a pair of ducks in the match. 92 for 5 and the tail was exposed. Blackwood would be next to go with the score on 111. Jason Holder and Joshua De Silva tried to carry the Windies closer to the target, but there would be another hero in the second innings. At 151, the Windies lost their ninth wicket, giving Pakistan the edge, the last pair needing 17 runs to win. Roach took the chance to take the singles with the inexperienced Jaden Seals. He surprisingly would be the one to escape with a dicey boundary that brought the hosts within two runs of the win. There was no question about the winning stroke. Roach 13 not out, the hero of the match as the Windies grab a nail-biting one-wicket win. Sergio Dufour, TV6 Sport. Speaking after the match, the hero for the Windies, Kimar Roach, said he just stayed positive. Just stay positive, that's me. Um, I know it was... It was it was fair reach. Um, I just tell myself, just believe, um, bat each ball at a time. As our batting coach says, Monty, um, one ball battles. I just try to take on every ball at a time. So uh, I know that Shiny was the track, so I try to keep him out as best as I could. But at the end of the day, it came off and we won the test match. Roach described the win as the greatest of his career. Was that the most important test innings you've played in your career so far? Unbeaten 30? By far. By far. Um, I've never been in a situation like that before, but of the tail. I am a part of the tail. So um, for me to just go out there and just obviously believe, that was my biggest thing. Believe, stay positive, but each ball at a time. I, it just came out. It just worked today. Two runs to win. Talk us through that winning shot. Were you expecting the ball in that area? Um, yeah. Um, I knew he was going to change the pace of the ball. Either a short ball or, or for a slower ball. But obviously, I'm just trying to pick the gaps and run to. It's run hard. Obviously, Jaden's there. And it, it happened. Just, I said, just believing. Um, and just backing yourself to the end and obviously we came with a win today. Everyone had confidence in your batting. Tell us what was your advice to Jaden Seals, the 19-year-old, batting with you when you won the game for the West Indies? Yes, um, I just told him to protect his stumps. Um, obviously, the, on the wicket, um, the biggest threat is the ball straight. So I just tell him to protect his wicket as best as you could. If you get nicked off, if you get caught anywhere else, that's fine. But just protect your wickets. Um, that, and he did it very well. He showed great fight. Uh, I said, for him, he's, he's a star for the future. He has a good heart. He's very calm under pressure. And I'm proud of him as well. To cycling, TNT's Tennille Campbell was pleased with her second place finish at the Pan American Road Cycling Championships in the Dominican Republic. The athlete was just edged on the line in a close and exciting finish. She spoke about her performance on social media after the race. She said, quote, what felt like a victory today was hearing how much I have inspired and gave hope to both men and women from neighboring Caribbean islands. I may not have won gold, but the feeling on the inside, listening to how much I am impacting and giving them hope, was indescribable. As we go, there's word that Bayern Munich and Germany legend Gerd Müller has died at the age of 75. One of the best strikers in history, Müller scored 68 goals in 62 appearances for West Germany. This is inclusive of the winning goal in the 1974 World Cup final against the Netherlands. He also scored 547 goals in 594 competitive games during 15 years at Bundesliga Giants Bayern. Stay with us, we'll check the weather next. So the Met Office has discontinued the adverse weather alert to green level. It says the threat of impactful weather has diminished significantly. Generally settled conditions are forecast despite a few showery interruptions. Tomorrow long sunny intervals would prevail after some morning and afternoon showers in confined areas. There is a low to medium chance that some of these showers could become heavy and or thundery. The forecast maximum temperatures for tomorrow are 31 degrees Celsius in Trinidad and 30 degrees Celsius in Tobago.
Here now are some stories making BBC headlines. The Taliban have seized the eastern Afghan city of Jalalabad as they continue their rapid advance towards Kabul, the only major city still under government control. It follows the capture of the northern city of mazar sharif Haiti has been hit by a strong aftershock just hours after a major earthquake killed more than 300 people. The Prime Minister says there's extensive damage and has declared a month-long state of emergency. The Red Cross in Lebanon says at least 20 people have been killed and nearly 80 injured in a fuel tanker explosion in the north of the country, which imports all of its fuel. Australia's most populous state, New South Wales, has begun a statewide lockdown as the Premier warns of difficult months ahead. 48 people have died in this current outbreak with tighter restrictions coming into play for COVID breaches. And that's the way it was. I'm Dominic Kalipasad. Remember, as the retail sector opens tomorrow, maintain some social distancing even while waiting in queues. On behalf of all at Team 6, have a safe and healthy week ahead.